Welcome back to the UCCU Center. Just finishing up the national anthem here. New Mexico State and Utah Valley getting set to do battle in the Western Athletic Conference. We just got word Marvin Mimsey's head coach of New Mexico State is not here tonight. He's in the hotel sick as a dog watching it on TV. Coach, we hope you get better real soon. Paul Weir, associate head coach, will take the reins tonight for the Aggies of New Mexico State. But first, the starting lineups for the Aggies of New Mexico State. Remy Berry is going to start it forward, 6'8", senior from Paris, France, averaging 13.5 points a game. Ian Baker starts at guard, a 6-foot sophomore from Washington, D.C., 10 points a game and three assists a game. Chili Napawe, one of our key players tonight, 6'10", senior from Johannesburg, South Africa, 9.1 a game and seven rebounds a game. Daniel Mullings, last year's WAC Player of the Year, is back. He's healthy. 6'2", senior from Toronto, averaging 13 points a game and six rebounds a game. And then Pascal Siakam, not only the Freshman of the Year candidate, maybe even Player of the Year candidate. 6'9", redshirt freshman from Cameroon, averaging 13.5 points, seven and a half rebounds. At guard, a 6'1 junior from American Fork, Utah. Number two, Marcel Davis. At guard, a 6'4 junior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Number three, Dante Williams. At forward, a 6'5 senior from Boise, Idaho, number 15, Mitch Bruneal. At forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Yuba City, California, number 21, Zach Nelson. And at forward, a 6'8 freshman from Laverton, Utah, number 45, Boston. Goobler. The Wolverines are led by head coach Dick Hunsaker and assisted by Curtis Condi, Freddie Owens, and Van Ayer. All right, you saw the starting lineups for the Wolverines and the Aggies. Wolverines averaging just 60 points a game, giving up 65, but New Mexico State best in the whack. Offensively at 69 points a game. Best in the whack defensively, giving up only 61 points a game. My imagination, Matt, or were the Wolverines of Utah Valley either very focused or just sort of uh, mellow there on their introductions? Well, we hope that it's it's focused because they're they're up for a tough test tonight. You know, one of the keys that we mentioned is they've got to get out to a very quick start. You saw a quick shot there of of uh, Coach Weir, Paul Weir, associate head coach for New Mexico State, going to run the show tonight in place of Marvin Mimsey's. Wolverines of Utah Valley, six and four at home this season. The Aggies of New Mexico State, well, they're sort of struggling on the road, just three and eight. Napawe saves that one, and New Mexico State's in business as we get started here in Orem. Glad you're with us. Watching on UVU TV and or the WAC Digital Network. Napawe. Runeal with the rebound. A really interesting, Jim. The Wolverines started out their first possession in a 2-3 zone. Look at this defense from New Mexico State. Nelson. 
That was almost like a 4-1 defense where they had four guys around the perimeter, one guy underneath. Perfect spot there for Zach to find some space, wide open for the easy turnaround jump shot. Zach Nelson coming off a 17-point performance last Saturday at Grand Canyon. All 17 were in the first half, though. And New Mexico State, a little early game jitters. Yeah, terrific start. You mentioned to me before the game what, what you thought one of the weak spots for New Mexico State was the three-point shot. That's probably why the Wolverines have gone to that 2-3 zone, forced the ball out on the perimeter as we get some pressure here from New Mexico State. Jump ball, possession arrow, Utah Valley direction. But to finish off my point, uh, the strength of New Mexico State is their front line and their forwards like we talked about. So I think the Wolverines probably thought, let's try and make him shoot the three. Let's not give up any e easy inside, inside opportunities. And so far, they've done that on the first two possessions. But again, look at this defense. They have four perimeter guys that are at or near the three-point line. I've never seen something like this before. And the Wolverines turn it over. This time, Barry pulling that loose ball out of the air. And the idea is right. You know, Zach with the previous possession in the paint. That time, Boston just with the turnover here as you get a strong drive there from Remy Barry in the end one opportunity. Boston Goobler being called for the foul. His first team's first. And Remy Barry able to turn around the corner. Zach Nelson not able to cut him off. And Boston a little bit late. That's. You know, one of those instances where if you're going to give up or you're going to get a foul, you got to you know, not give him an easy opportunity. And Remy converts the three point play. Let's see what the Wolverines can do against this Aggie defense this time. Yeah, we keep hearing, I keep hearing the uh, New Mexico State coaches saying, stay high. But look at this. This is exactly what the Wolverines want to do get the ball in the middle of the paint if they're going to leave the paint open. So scouting report on UVUs, they don't have a middleman strong enough to take advantage of that, I you think, maybe? I don't know if that's necessarily it. I think that they're just trying to force UVU out and not, not let them get inside the paint. Shot clock at 14. Foul on the way, Mullings. You know, the, the idea is when you get these perimeter players, these four guys around the top, is if you can penetrate or if you can get past that, you've got a lot of opportunities getting the ball inside, for the kick out or the drive, a lot of opportunities. Bruneal misses. Nelson with the rebound back up won't go. Napawe pulls that board down for New Mexico State. Baker. Wolverines, three on two. Blocked by Siakam. New Mexico State with it. Yeah, you know, New Mexico's playing to their strength. They have size inside, they're long, they're athletic. You see all these early shots, these early chances inside are being challenged. That time the shot gets blocked, and the Wolverines are, are aware of that, and it's affecting how they attack and attempt their shots. Napawe working inside. Both teams start one of five from the floor. Right, we're getting up. This is going to be big for Boston in that area. Boston Goodler, you know, freshman. If they continue to play this defense, Boston and Zach are going to have, can have big games. Boston's going to have those opportunities at shots, but I think where he's also going to have an effect is how well he can pass out, how well he can find teammates if the defense collapses to him. Mullings flutter won't go, and the Poway cleans up this time. New Mexico State back out in front. Yeah, and New Mexico State gets a dead ball, like a score. They're, they're looking to press. Uh, didn't see specifically what kind of t what kind of press there. It looked something like a two 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 one type press, but they're going full court. They're active, trying to steal the ball, and they're looking to trap too in, in certain areas of the court. If the Wolverines get it across, they've got to be aware of a of an immediate trap coming. Yes, yeah, two two one press here. The last foul was Ian Baker. Here comes the trap. Zach tried to bounce it in. Mullings kicked it away. It'll still be UVU basketball here in front of our broadcast position. Yeah, and UVU's doing the right thing, trying to get the ball at the high post. Again, I'm, I'm amazed at this defense because it's, you know, it's not your typical zone like with a 2-3 or a 3-2. It's 
it's a 4 1. Well right now UVU looks like they can handle it. Yeah and they'll just overload or try and get more guys in the paint than what New Mexico State's going to put in there. Nice job of Boston taking up the middle. Zach able to sneak underneath and a skilled reverse layup. Three outside is missed by Barry. Runeal brings it up. And now watch the bigs because you're going to have Boston at the, at the, the high post and Mitch is going to be working the corners. Dante is going to be working the corners too. First media timeout, 15-22 left first half. This one has all the makings of a pretty good game. Wolverines by one. You are watching UVU TV. We played four and a half minutes of pretty exciting basketball here in Orem, and you're just astounded at this uh, New Mexico State defense. Well, it's just not something that I've seen before. I, I don't remember if they did it last year or not. I, I don't recall them doing this because it's it's unique to me and something that I haven't really seen before. They're very flexible with the four out, the one inside. It's not as if they're set to those certain positions. They have a lot of freedom to move depending on where the Wolverines go, but. I think the way that you attack it is just what you've done or what the Wolverines have done. Try and get it at the high post. If the shot's there, take it. You know, look for the Wolverines to get guys in the corners, get passes, you know, opportunities to look opposite side of the, of the court. Those chances may be there. And I, I think New Mexico State's really trying to you know, see the length. You see their hands are always out on the perimeter. They don't want to make those passes easy. Starting five still out there. The Poway's on the bench for New Mexico State, replaced by Wilkins. Bruneal beats the shot clock. Zach Nelson pulls down the offensive board. Excuse me, Gubler. Davis. Yeah, and th that's going to be big. If, if they stay in the zone, if the Wolverines can come up with those, you know, 50 50 balls, terrific effort there for Boston. And if they can convert those second chances into points like they did there, that will really help them. Yeah. Wolverine basketball. Yeah, Siakam with the drive, stepped out of bounds. You now on offense for New Mexico State, you, you look at Pascal Siakam, who averages 13 and a half points per game, who's a forward. Remy Berry averages 13.4 points per game. So I, I like the I like the call for the zone because. You know, they, maybe the Wolverines don't think they match up really well with them and trying to make it uh, more difficult for them, not posting up, not getting a lot of easy opportunities that they might be used to inside. UVU with a three-point lead. UVU led in the first meeting between these two by three, but it was only 3 nothing at the time. Another kicked ball in the entry pass. And I, I think a key for the for UVU against the zone here too, Jim, is that they cannot get pushed out because that's what the defense wants. They want the UVU to be pushed out well beyond the three-point line. So if they can stay down, stay close to the three-point line, it'll be a lot easier for them to attack. Five-second shot. The Poway back in and cleans the board that time. For UVU on their zone, active hands, always making sure you know where the shooters are. 
And no easy entry passes because that's what the Aggies want to do. Zach claiming that he, yeah, he touched it, but he bounced it off Siakam. Officials not having any of that. Wolverines make their first substitution of the game. Brendan Evans, 6'5", senior from Sonora, California, replaces Boston Goobler in the lineup. And I just mentioned how New Mexico State, uh, for UVU, if they get offensive rebounds, that will be a big part of their offense. The same goes for New Mexico State against the zone that UVU is playing. I think the UVU Wolverines are going to have a size disadvantage for most of this game with the length that the Aggies have. So we've got to have everybody active inside rebounding. We saw Alex Carr check in. And New Mexico State over and back. A really good start here. We're about seven minutes in. We said one of the keys of the game was to get off to a fast start. I think that the energy kind of really picked up for UVU after those first couple possessions. Rudeal. Yeah, you, you, I love the attack there. I, I wish Brendan would, when he gets that ball, look to shoot. He's got a jump shot. He has the ability to make that jumper from the free throw line, but you know, Mitch had plenty of room. Great job of attacking against the zone. Try and get those big guys in trouble, in foul trouble, that is. Four different Wolverines have scored already. We've seen entire games where only maybe five Wolverines would score. Mullings dishes off inside. Siakam can't finish. Wolverine basketball. Yeah, really nice recovery there from Zach. Couldn't quite tell if he got a hand on the ball, but he at least challenged it. Good recovery. Trying to work it into Brendan Evans. Three on one back the other way. Mullings missed the layup. Siakam is there for the and one putback. Brendan Evans called for the foul. Yeah, and those are the plays that you just can't have. You can't have a turnover at the top of the key because you're going to have those four guys or three guys, however many there are. If, you, if they can get that turnover, they're out and running. And you see the Wolverines were not able to get back in transition defense. They gave up the initial offensive board, and then compounding the mistake was the foul on the, on the second chance. Pascal Siakam, redshirt freshman, 6'9", 230 pounds from Cameroon. Second, or excuse me, seventh leading scorer in the Western Athletic Conference. Second leading rebounder. Player of the week last week. Makes a free throw and goes to the bench. Here comes this 2-2-1 two, two, press. New Mexico State subbing in, getting a lot of guys in. I think so far UVU's handled the pressure really well. Nice job of protecting the ball from by Alex there. DK Eldridge, a little bump in the backcourt. Third team foul against New Mexico State, one each. Eldridge, Baker, and Mullings. Wolverines are 5 of 11 from the floor. New Mexico State, 3 of 11. Neither team's hit a 3 yet. You know, this this four-man four defense here is like a wall being formed, and if Wolverines can break it, it's usually worked out well for him. Ten second shot clock. Evans. Nothing there. Baker. Lost the hand up, gathers it back in. Powie feeds Wilkins. Now the jumper outside by Eldridge. Here's your first three of the game. Good, uh, nice job of posting up there, getting the ball inside, forced the defense to collapse and didn't get out to the shooter soon enough. Fifth lead change already. Third kick ball too. Yeah. Another media timeout. 11.09 first half, just a one point lead for New Mexico State here in Orem. talk about life after college, you know, 
entering the real world. But this is engaged learning. I'm not just reading about it or watching someone else do it. I'm learning by doing. I'm at UVU. I'm in the real world every day. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Back at the UCCU Center, Jim McCullough along with Matt Peterson, New Mexico State currently uh, well entrenched in first place in the Western Athletic Conference standings. Mentioned in the pregame show that if they win tonight, they would clinch the number one seed, but they won't clinch the championship outright. Grand Canyon technically could still win it, but because Grand Canyon not eligible for the tournament in three weeks, uh, that would leave New Mexico State still as the number one seed. UVU, though, can still climb as high as uh, third, I believe, in the standings uh, if they run the table from here. A lot of basketball tonight before we need to worry about all of that, though. Jaden Jackson makes his first appearance for the Wolverines. Jackson's got it. Five second shot clock. Carr puts up the desperation three. Bottom. Alex Carr, you know, he came in late against. Arizona down in Tucson earlier this season and hit three three pointers and every one of them just like that. Yeah, that was a big shot, much needed shot because Wolverines hadn't made a three, 0 for three so far from the three point line. And it's good to see Alex if he can you know, be that scoring presence off of the bench. It's an added bonus. Wolverines are back out in front. Shot clock winding down for the Aggies. Bruneal tracked down the loose ball. One thing we've seen, Jim, is with this defense is the Wolverines have been in low shot clock situations because at times they've been pretty content. This is one of the quicker shots Mitch from the corner, but I think that'll help UVU if they can get these quick opportunities. New Mexico State in several possessions has done a nice job of running the shot clock down against the Wolverines. Bruneal's got four points. Nelson's got four. For New Mexico State, three each from Eldridge and Berry and Siakam. Napawe just one shot inside. Yeah, and terrific defense there from Brendan making Napawe work, not giving him any easy chance. Several Wolverine defenders have done a terrific job one on one defense against him. Jackson. New Mexico State just throws it away. Yeah, Brendan. He, yeah, Ian Baker thought that Remy Berry was going to be there, and Berry thought there was somebody else behind him, evidently. Yeah, Brendan was battling for the rebound. He, you know, he kind of swiped at the ball and then stuck his hand out a little bit, but confusion there from New Mexico State. A lot of shots that UVU is getting are along the baselines, and I, I really like that because obviously there's a lot of space over there, but as a shooter, for me, that was one of my favorite spots to shoot it from was the baseline. And Mitch has that shot. Jaden has that shot. I heard you never missed. That's probably true. <laughs> you were the one that told me that. <laughs> no, I, I missed plenty. But along the baseline is, uh, you know, as a shooter, I love one of those. Uh, I love that area in that shot. Bruneal. Siakam pulls down the board. Third rebound for Siakam. Mullings fights his way inside. 
all sorts of contact. We'll see who the foul is on. It's going to go against UVU. Brendan Evans. For the most part, against the zone, excuse me, uh, the zone defense for UVU is collapsing. You know, hard hard to defend when there's a skip pass like that and there's a lot of ball movement against the zone. That time, Wolverines collapsed on Bullings, but they got called to the foul. Daniel Mullings, senior, injured, still got that right uh, finger taped pretty bad, uh, pretty tightly rather. I don't know if it was a broken finger. I think it was earlier in the season and missed the majority of the season. Just doesn't look like the same player that he did last yeah, year yet. Yeah, he's. He, you're right. He just doesn't seem like the same player. And you, know, you, you hate to see that if the injury is what's caused that, but he still is a. Oh yeah, he's still. Force for he's still great. Yeah, he's still yeah. a good player. That's for dang sure. Wolverines nursing a three-point lead. Twelve minutes deep into this game. Under 10 seconds on their shot clock. Darius Hamilton kicks it outside. Marcel Davis can't get the desperation three to go. Bruniel tracks down a loose ball rebound. Davis misses again. And Poway pulls it in for New Mexico State. Yeah, you got to like that though. Again, another offensive rebound, just that time not able to convert. Good job, Alex. New Mexico State basketball. Brings us to timeout. Seven and a half minutes left here. First half, Wolverines. It's a low scoring game, but it's pretty exciting. They lead by three. You are watching UVU TV. I had an idea. Lots of people have ideas. But engaged learning helped me develop my idea and make it real. And now with sales over a million dollars, best assignment ever. Good sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you jump or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is all about character. It is about doing your best for your coaches and teammates. It is about having respect for your opponents, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It's fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Well, neither team tearing it up shooting percentage wise. UVU shooting 39%. New Mexico State just 28%. And that's one of the reasons it's just a three point game. UVU is led by as many as five. New Mexico State's biggest lead has been one a couple of times. Six lead changes so far. I think we see both defenses really settling in. You know, the pace has slowed since the start of the game. New Mexico State, again, forcing UVU into low shot clock situations. UVU's kind of done the same, you know, forced New Mexico State to work the ball around. No easy shots from them. So I think those those defenses, the zone, are are really finding their rhythm. Seconds. Somebody camped out in the lane. Yeah, I think it was Napawe because Siakam was working along the baseline. I thought I saw him get out of the paint. I think that was on Napawe. Never got out of the middle. Seven minutes left here in the first half. Still just a three-point lead for Utah Valley. Zach Nelson misses. Barry with the rebound. 
senior from Paris, France. Nine foreign players on this New Mexico State team. Five from Canada, two from France, one from Cameroon, one from South Africa. Their recruiting trip budget must be enormous. <laughs> Off the charts. Mullings misses. Yeah, that's a tough shot for Mullings. The zone did its job there. Exactly what you want. Jaden Jackson misses the back the other way. Siakam pulls down the board. Mullings just one point. He's missed all four of his shots from the floor. Inside his shot clock with 10 seconds. Yep, slap it away from Siakam. Wolverines come up with a turnover. Jackson blocked from behind. Great recovery by Daniel Mullings. It'll be Utah Valley basketball. Jaden Jackson claiming he was fouled. Well, you say Mullings not the player he was, but yeah. he's still darn good. Yeah, I mean, just look at that. He Sized up the ball here, and nice job of not fouling if you're Daniel Mullings. Terrific recovery speed from behind. See the bigs inside, Zach working that high post. Gubler got the Poway up in the air. Chilling the Poway coming back down on top of him. The Poway now with his first personal fourth team foul. And that was good high low action Jim. We haven't seen a lot of that so far. We've seen the bigs passing it out to the perimeter but a really quick decision there from Zach seeing that Boston was wide open and nice dump down and Boston did a great job knowing that you go up against shot shot blockers and athletic players inside you see the the slight you know up fake or ball fake to get in the Poway in the air and then he drew the contact. Boston Goodler gets them both. Just the eighth, seventh, and eighth free throw for Boston Goodler this whole season. Attempted. He's made four out of eight. Yeah, and that was the first two free throws for UVU in this game, you know, 15 minutes in. Usually see free throw attempts, but that's that's the effect of the zone. Barry cuts that five point lead down to three, and Wolverines turn it over. Fourth turnover for UVU. Yeah, that, that was a mental breakdown from Zach. He under threw Mitch by five feet. Officials look at each other, they'll give it to New Mexico State. 37 game clock, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Baker. Gonna get Zach with a foul here. Yeah, the official made the movement. Zach had his had his arm, I believe it was his left left arm. The official did a nice head. little dance move there. He, he did. Ian Baker shot bounces around, drops through good. Wolverines lead is just one. You know, one thing you, you don't see against this zone is a lot of dribble penetrations. You know, maybe if you get it swung and get the get some open space, but it's hard for the guards to drive, and normally against the zone, you just like that, Marcel, not a lot of space to drive. That's usually what can break down a 2-3 zone or a 3-2 zone, but it's hard for the Wolverines perimeter guys to get inside. Well, they need to get a shot off now. Goodwin misses. Bruniel, right place, right time, back up. The Poway pulled that one out yeah. midair. You see the size impact. Yeah. You know, I mean, they can put their hands up there long inside, and the Poway is a, is a force. You just got to keep going at him. Try and draw contact. Try and get some fouls. You can't stop being aggressive inside, but they're aware of the, the shot blocking threat. UVU's missed their last nine shots. 
325 to play. First half. Mullings will shoot a couple. Fouled by Boston Gubler. Gubler's second foul, team's fifth. 319 left, first half. Wolverines of Utah Valley by one. Free throws when we get back. Boston Googler, fifth team foul. Mexico State's been whistled for four. 14 rebounds apiece for these two teams. And, yeah. you know, you would expect coming in here with the size differential that New Mexico State had, that they would really dominate the boards. Yeah, and, and how you combat size and athleticism is proper positioning. And I think most times UVU has been in great position. And it's a, it's a fun matchup for me to watch inside Zach, Brendan, Boston, who's been inside, couldn't think of Boston's name, Darius Hamilton, who's been inside, because they're battling against the bigs for New Mexico State for that position, and it's really hard to block out against his own because you're looking at an area, not necessarily a man. So, you know, I think they've done a great job of, you know, against the zone, they've only given up, UVU's only given up four offensive rebounds, and UVU has six offensive rebounds against the Aggies, so it's working. Daniel Mullings, all three of his points come from the stripe. Six straight points for New Mexico State. They're back out in front by a digit. Dante Williams, Mitch Bunil for the rebound. Yeah, there's another offensive rebound. So if they, New Mexico State only has this one guy inside, you, you see the wings crashing down. That's seven offensive rebounds, a lot of weak side rebounds. It's a good sight. Well, you see who it is. It's Tanvir Bular, their 7-3 center. Was hurt almost the entire season. Got hurt in preseason. Another turnover by the Wolverines on the run. Eldridge with it. alley -oop. Wow, Siakam there to flush that one down. And Jim, the turnovers are what's hurting UVU because that is now four turnovers for UVU, and that's led to 10 points for New Mexico State. So half of, you see the replay here, a nice alley-oop play, Siakam with the. Yeah, tell me that kid's a freshman right now. Yeah, that's there. amazing. Hey, come yeah. on. Wow, that's impressive. But again, it's the fact that they've given up or they have 10 points. New Mexico State, half of their points have come off of four UVU turnovers. and. You cannot turn the ball over. You cannot risk that pass. We've seen how many kicked balls they've had, how many balls have, have been deflected from passes trying to go into the high post from the top guy or the top guard in the zone. And you're outnumbered because you only have two guards on offense, two or three guards, and you got the four around the perimeter. They're able to turn those into points. So, you know, one thing that folks on the rest of the game is can UV turn, uh, excuse me, take care of the basketball and not get turned over. UVU did lead 17 to 12. It's now 20 to 17 the other way. UVU's basketball. And the dead ball opportunities too allows New Mexico State to set up their zone. And their press. Up on 
two minutes left here in this first half. New Mexico State with their biggest lead of the first half right now. Yeah, did we say they could not shoot threes? Well, we thought that might be a, a weak spot for them. What are they average on the season? They're averaging 36, 30, 36, 37%. But those hurt even more when the shot clock's running down. Which is unusual because they have the top two three-point shooters in the whack. Yeah. In Ian Baker and uh, Remy Berry. The rest of the team's what's pulling them down. I mean, you look at Pascal Siakam's taken two this year. Napawe hasn't taken any, so yeah. Yeah, it's coming from just a few guys, and that's what drives their percentages. Five Sh seconds on the shot clock. Zach Nelson. Yeah, that, that was one of the few times where you get the ball penetrated, driving down, you get a quick timeout here from New Mexico State, but if you can somehow break that, that perimeter defense and get inside, it just opens things up, and... Seen Zach with a couple layups inside Boston with a couple attempts, too. That basket was the first basket for UVU since uh, the 10 minute mark. They had two free throws since the 10 minute mark. Yeah, and that was needed because New Mexico State yeah. hit that long three and they put together their own run. So that was a that was a big basket. You know, minute 10 left here. Important for UVU to close out strong, not let New Mexico State gain any momentum going into half. You saw Coach Dick Hunsaker, head coach of Utah Valley in his 13th season here, 396 career wins. Right now sees his Wolverines down by four. Yeah, it'll be a good matchup inside. Darius Hamilton batting, battling against Napawe. Hamilton, a 6'8", junior from San Antonio, Texas. Jumper outside, Siakam misses. Parr with the rebound. That's exactly what you want. Siakam, not a very good jump shooter. He'll take that shot all, all night long. It's about the only thing he's not good at. Yeah. yeah. I mentioned he doesn't shoot any threes. He's only taken two on the year, but. He's had a heck of a player for a retro freshman. Shot clock's at. 10, game clock at 26 seconds here in the first half. Nelson for three. Air ball that one. New Mexico State. Paul Weir, associate head coach, jumps up off the bench and says, go for the last shot. Again, if you join us late, Marvin Menzies, head coach of New Mexico State, sick in the hotel. Well, plays like that probably makes him feel a lot better. Wow, that was a low scoring first half. Some pretty good basketball. 25-19, New Mexico State with a six point lead over Utah Valley. New Mexico State, 13 and two this season with the lead. Back with your halftime show, coming up. You are watching UVU TV. People talk about life after college, you know, entering the real world. But this is engaged learning. I'm not just reading about it or watching someone else do it. I'm learning by doing. I'm at UVU. I'm in the real world every day.
Houston isn't defined by its scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you jump or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is all about character. It is about doing your best for your coaches and teammates. It is about having respect for your home, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It's fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Back at the UCCU Center, energy conserving UCCU Center, Aggies leading the Wolverines 25 to 19. Yeah, I, it's the Green Man group coming we out to do their thing. We have a problem and we need your help. Making a it's feeble attempt at some humor. You know, the first the time these two played Even here uh, earlier Europe. this season, it's happening the to Aggies in New Mexico State our at their place led at halftime 33-22, ended up winning it's by 25 points. That, that was back on November 2nd. We have to stop it. January so listen up. Sexual assault and any unwanted sexual contact. Well, I thought the Wolverines started strong, consent, but their offense consent, slowed down towards the end. What did you just tell me? One basket right. in the last ten minutes. One, one, one basket and two free throws in, in the last ten minutes. Are you you know, luckily, their defense has carried them and they, they've held New career. Mexico State it's in check crime. here. It's wrong. Um, yes, you know, eight of twenty-six yes. from the field from UVU. One yes, of eight from the three-point line. They've only got two free throws. We need to take responsibility for our actions. And our you know, a lot, a lot, it's going to come down if to the shot-making ability and how well the Wolverines can convert the open looks that they get. If we saw as far as New Mexico we State, I think if defensively I for happening, UVU, they've held you know, Remy Berry, they've held Pascal Siakam in, in check, and Napawe in check. 5-5 you know, five, five, and 4 points respectively for those three. But where, where the game has turned for me and I don't want to really be swung to the favor of New Mexico State is... If you, know, you have been sexually five assaulted, there is normally Jim is there pretty is good. Hope. You know, yeah, you're pretty good for a half. This is about against respect. This type of defense, it's about responsibility. New Mexico State it's was able to turn those five turnovers into 13 assault. points. And that's, and that's what they want to do. They want to turn you over many. and they want it's to get them out and get out of transition. It's on us. Join us by pledging to stop sexual assault here at UVU. It's on us. New Mexico State to get in, in transition. Good sportsmanship you know, isn't them. defined by a scoreboard. It isn't first defined first by how high you jump or this. how fast you can run. Well, Good sportsmanship you know, is all about this care. Is nice, uh, it is about doing your best the, for your coaches the and teammates. It is about Scott. having respect for your opponents, Siakam, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It's fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We are the Western Athletic Conference. To not allow that ball to get inside or closer to the basket. And I think how well UVU you know, breaks down that defensive pressure on the perimeter, how well they can get in and around the basket will be will be big time for them. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, and we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Who can make shots? When they get the chance, three-pointers or wherever on the court, who can make a shot? It all, all right, comes down break. to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas. 
March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at OrleansArena.com. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't count. defined how by how high you jump say that. or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is teacher, all about care. It, it is about doing your best so, for your coaches my and teammates. At ABU, it is about having respect for your opponents, now. the officials, Does and the fans. Good difference? sportsmanship is that. winning with class and losing with dignity. It's fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We are the Western Athletic Conference. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you jump or how fast you can run. But sportsmanship is all about character. It is about We're doing your best for your, your coaches and teammates. It is about State having respect for your opponents, the officials, the and the fans. Good, good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It's fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites coach. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Second season here. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're always a fun interview to do, especially when you guys are defending WAC champions. You're in your second year. Nobody thought you were going to do what you did last year. Went down and won the tournament. How's this year's team looking? This year's team's looking really good. We're very, very young. Um, we've got 13 newcomers, and we got 24 on roster, 11 freshmen. So Holy cow. Yeah, I know. We're very young, but we're very talented. So, uh, so far, good start for us, and we're learning a lot about ourselves, but we have an optimistic future. I'll say a good start. I mean, you knocked off Indiana. You beat Virginia. You uh, Let's see. You beat Wisconsin. What is going on here? Here. These are big name schools. Yeah, they certainly are. We, you know, the girls came out strong. We've been training very, very hard for several months and came out strong and confident, and we got some great wins. So a little easier to recruit once you had that WAC championship under your belt? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, once the girls, the newcomers saw the rings, they, that's what they <laughs> want now, so they're not stopping until they get one. Yeah, yeah, it's all about the bling. Yep. It's college kids, that's you know. That's right. All right, so uh, if fans want to come see you play, what's the schedule? Because uh, it usually is pretty cold this time of year, but it's like 65 degrees today, but the schedule is set well in advance. When can they see you play at home? Um, we play March 18th is our opening really? opening games. We play uh, Weaver State, and then we've got um, Oklahoma State at home and a few other uh, BYU, obviously. So we've got a few other in-state rivals coming in and then our, our normal WAC teams coming in to play us. But not a ton of home games this year, but we're all around the country. So the fact that you're beating these teams, I mean, Cal State Fullerton, I see you beat them 9 nothing, and they were ranked top 25. Yep. What is going – this is amazing, quite <laughs> frankly. You. Uh, now you guys are going to have the target on your back, you know, once WAC play starts. Of course. Yeah. Um, and, you know, other teams in the WAC are doing well as well. But, you know, coming out and uh, run ruling number 25 in the nation was a huge win for us on Sunday. So nine nothing. Really? Who pitched yeah. that? Uh, Bailey Moore. She's uh, one of our sophomore pitchers and she threw oh, the she's shutout. an old timer. She's a sophomore. Yeah, I, well, I told you we're young. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so, All yeah. right. So uh, I'm guessing that recruiting is an ongoing thing for you. Probably a lot of freshmen uh, around the area checking you guys out. Yep. Yep. I and mean, we're always looking for, uh, you know, new talent to join the team. But yeah, we're excited about what we got. So speaking of softball, I just lobbed that up there for you, you know, to, to hit that <laughs> out of the park. Nikki Palmer, head softball coach here at Utah Valley University, defending Western Athletic Conference champions. What do you think of the first half, by the way? It's exciting. And we're excited for the second half and see this green team come out on top. Yeah, no kidding. 
We're going to take a break. Second half coming your way. Wolverines down by six at halftime here in Orem. Thanks, Nikki. Thank you. You are watching UVU TV. People talk about college like you're in some kind of bubble. Like there's college and then there's the real world. Hey, this is UVU. You're not just reading about it or watching someone else do it. This is engaged learning. At the Certificate Associates Bachelor's or Master's level, you're in the real world every day. Sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you jump or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is all about character. It is about doing your best for your coaches and teammates. It is about having respect for your opponents, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It's fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We are the Western Athletic Conference. I had an idea. Lots of people have ideas. But engaged learning helped me develop my idea and make it real. And now with sales over a million dollars, best assignment ever. Six-point lead for New Mexico State. Getting set to start our second half here in Orm. A quick look in at the scoreboard shows uh, another whack game underway. And are you kidding me? Halftime, Grand Canyon is losing to Texas Pan American in Phoenix by seven points at halftime. If that score holds, if Pan American wins and New Mexico State wins, they clinch the WAC regular season championship tonight. You just never know, you, do you, it, Jim? You don't know what's going to yeah. happen. It's uh, what makes sports exciting, and especially for the WAC, there's still a lot left on the line. Well, you know, for decades, the WAC has been known as the Wacky WAC, and uh, a lot of folks thought, well, with this new batch of teams coming into the WAC, maybe things would settle down. Not so. I think it's just as wacky as it's always been. Yeah, I think it is too, and it's it's fun for us as fans to be able to see that. UVU currently three and six in the WAC. New Mexico State leading the way at nine and one. Wolverines, New Mexico State. Well, this is their fourth time they played. New Mexico State with a two to one game edge. Last year, New Mexico State won at their place. They lost here in overtime. So far this season, New Mexico State won at their place by 25. And right now, UVU's got a six point deficit to dig out of here in the second half. Pretty low score though, Matt, at yep. the, in the first half. Yeah, it turned into a defensive game. Um, defensive half, I should say. As you mentioned, one basket, two free throws for UVU in, in the last 10 minutes, so. Yeah, and UVU led 15 to 11 at, at that point. Yeah, and you know, Mexico State really shut down the offense for UVU. One thing that I, I like seeing from UVU's offense is they've got seven assists on you know, seven assists on their eight made field goals. So it's not really going to be a one on one type game where you can give the ball to someone and say, hey, go get us a basket. You know, it's it's going to be a team effort with passing and, and ball movement. And that was one of the keys to the game. Dick Hunsager looking pretty sinister tonight. Second half underway. Mexico State with possession here to open the second half. And that six point lead. Starting five. 
here in the second half. The same five for each team to start in the first half. Mullings off the glass this time will go. That's his first shot from the floor. Yeah, and that's the skill of Daniel Mullings because, he, oh, there comes a, oh. Almost another turnover from UVU, but to finish my thought, a nice play from Daniel Mullings. Clock running down, clutch basket. Well, Rings do turn it over. Mullings. It wasn't quite an alley-oop, but Siakam still able to finish. Siakam now with seven points. And more points off of turnovers, too. Five points each, Barry Baker and Mullings. Davis. I like how Marcel attacked. If they're going to put pressure on you full court. Get the ball in the middle of the court and attack. Great job of reading the defense and pulling up for the jump shot. Played a minute and a half here of our second half. Wolverines come up with a turnover. Seven turnovers for New Mexico State, six for UVU. Davis got the hot hand now. Yeah, spark that the Wolverines need. Marcel's done a good job of working the middle. Early on in the game, a lot of the bigs were taking that spot, flashing, being active, moving there. The guards get involved with that, too. And if they can have a, a guard like Marcel or Dante get the ball at the high post, they've got to look to score, and Marcel converted that time. A little collision there. Dante Williams, Remy Berry. I thought Remy Berry lucky to not come away with a foul there. Both guys were going for the ball, and it was off Dante, but Remy at the very end here looks like he shoved Dante and knocked him to the ground. Yeah, a little incidental contact. I'm not sure it was intentional. Back to live action. Whistle away from the ball. This one's going to go against Utah Valley's Mitch Bruniel. Was it Bruniel or Gugler? Bruniel, his first. Team's first of the half. Poway against Gubler. Siakam throws it right to Mitch Bruniel. Yeah, perfect timing on the double team from Boston, forcing the turnover. Zach Nelson to the rack. Six straight points from UVU. New Mexico State's going to take a timeout. Yeah, and that's an important answer because Wolverines were down eight points, two quick baskets coming back. You know, they had to have that answer. New Mexico State threatening to stretch the game out. New Mexico State led by 10, 29-19, before these six straight points from Utah Valley. Six points, Marcel Davis, eight now from Zach Nelson. Four each from Bruniel and Gubler. Three from Alex Carr. Dante Williams, starting guard yet to hit a shot. For New Mexico State, seven, eight, seven from Siakam, then five each from Barry, Baker, and Mullings. Four from Napaway. And, you know, Jim, a lot of these baskets recently for UVU have been early. They haven't been, you know, passing around the perimeter, working around against the zone. They've been early attempts, whether it be in transition, breaking the press. They haven't allowed New Mexico State to set their defense. So. If the Wolverines can take advantage of those opportunities, they've just shown that they can they can accomplish it. It's taking a minute 37 for UVU to score those six points. You know, we talked over and over, they only scored two points from the floor the last 10 minutes of the first half, and here's six straight points in a minute and a half. I think they got a little talking to in that locker room. Been there and had that. I know what that's like. <laughs> I'm sure. Siakam blocking foul, Zach Nelson. Right call there from the official. Zach had the perfect idea. You get Siakam, you get a big guy dribbling down the lane. Zach didn't quite take it straight on. You see him just looking out to the wing, didn't fully get over there. and. Got Siakam with the with the lower body. 
I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that the official got the call right or the fact that you agreed with the official. You know, this has never happened before I know. on UVU TV. It's embarrassing for me because I'm, <laughs> I'm usually wrong when I, you know, just a few minutes ago, I talked about the uh, the push there from Remy Berry and on the replay it didn't look like much, but I'll just, I'll just wait until the officials make their call. How's that? Utah Valley basketball. Here comes this 2-2-1 two, two, pressure. UVU's had a little trouble with the press this season. Not this time. <laughs> Foul inside. Siakam. Yeah. Pascal Siakam picks up his first. And this is another thing. Look how wide open the space was there. Boston sitting right at the free throw line. He makes a quick decision. Turns and passes it to, to Mitch. No foul called on the shot from Mitch there, but Boston with the attempted follow-up. It's another one of those instances where it's early in the shot clock. That ball gets moving. It doesn't die in one spot, and it doesn't stick. Ball gets at the free throw line. It's out of Boston's hands, and he ends up at the line. Boston Goobler. Four free throws tonight. He's a machine, this guy. He had two all season coming in here that he's made. Two of six coming in here. Tonight, Goobler. Four of four. Mexico State trying to go high low with Siakam and Napawi inside. Boston did a nice job of fronting. Siakam, nice, nice move. Yeah, that was an on-time pass. The defense wasn't set. No chance to get up and contest that shot with his length. Siakam, first player on either team in double figures. He's got 10. Coach Weir yelling, high post guard, high post guard, because he's aware that UVU's had success getting the ball inside. Again, Marvin Menzies, head coach in New Mexico State, watching this one in his hotel room, sick. Wolverines turn it over. You got to wonder if he's not texting in plays or yeah. uh, switches or changes to what he sees. Pa Coach Paul Weir. Saw Zach Nelson after that pass from Boston went out of bounds. Zach made the motion with his hands just calm down. I think Boston was a little bit too eager there. He realizes he gets that ball at the high post. He's got options. Three won't go from Eldridge, Utah Valley basketball. Brings us to a media timeout. Utah Valley hanging tough with New Mexico State, 15-47 left. You are watching UVU TV. Both of these teams hitting three of four shots here in the second half thus far. New Mexico State only has three regular season games left after tonight. Saturday they're at Grand Canyon in Phoenix. And then they have a whole week off before they travel to play Texas Pan American. Then they have another whole week off before hosting Chicago State. Meanwhile, UVU will be at home 48 hours from now hosting Texas Pan American. Then next week, at Kansas City and Chicago State before hosting Bakersfield the following week. So UVU with four games left, two of them at home. Yeah. 
Utah Valley out rebounding New Mexico State right now 1915 the reason that's important is New Mexico State is number 21 in the nation in rebounding margin. They out rebound their opponents by an average of 6.3 so you've used an amazing yeah, job. They have they've hung with them on the boards they've been competitive they've got offensive rebounds that that part of the game tonight has been a success. Zach Nelson turn around. Perfect timing on that play. Mitch Bruniel setting a screen inside. I believe he set that on Napawe. Zach just curled around the screen and a perfect entry pass inside. And nice touch on the finish from Zach. New Mexico State's 10 point lead is whittled down to three right now. Uh, this battle inside for Boston and Napawe is fun to watch. Gubler might have got a hand on that one, but the fadeaway is no good. Siakam pulls it down, went back up with it. Jump ball called. Possession arrow, I believe, New Mexico State's direction. No, it's UBU direction. Sorry, my bad. And that was, not sure if they called who the jump ball was for, but Zach had a chance at it. Zach had a hand on it, and so did Boston. His job of getting the jump ball, continuing this momentum that UBU's building. Mexico State has missed their last four shots. Zach Nelson for three. He's five of nine tonight. That shot's been there, and I think it will continue to be there. That corner three or the corner jump shot from the baseline. Wolverines just have to step up and knock it down. Mullins. Ball batted around. UVU on the run with it. Dante Williams. Can't get it down, New Mexico State ball. Coach Weir frustrated inside. There's a lot of contact on both ends, Jim. You know, that previous possession, players battling for the ball inside. I like how they're letting it go. It's been physical on both ends, as you see Dante pushing it in transition. Got a great look at it, just not enough, uh, not enough umph on the ball, and Zach comes in to knock it down. But the game is getting physical, especially in the paint. 14 minutes left. Dante Williams went for the steal, got the foul instead. Yeah, I like the idea from Dante. He knew that that ball was going to be reversed just a tad late. See him eyeing Wilkins coming up just a hair late. Jumper back as we get to live action. Long two. Mexico State's got some shots like that off the screens. Screens on the top guy against the zone. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Marcel Davis will launch the three. Rebound comes down to Barry. Barry. Just the first one got the second one. You know, with that size and length that New Mexico State has, you're going to time out from Coach Hunsaker here. They're really pounding the offensive glass. A lot of their attempts recently on offense have been right around the rim or right at the rim. The Wolverines have got away with some missed layups and some shot attempts from New Mexico State inside, but it has to be concerning the fact that New Mexico State just pounded it inside, getting second chances. 21 rebounds for each of these two teams. Shooting percentage for the game, UVU 35%, 42% for New Mexico State. Seven point lead for New Mexico State. They've led by as many as 10. UVU has led by as many as five. That was at the 13 13 mark of the first half. I don't know what the score was. I don't remember. Oh, I do remember what it was. It was 21 to 29. And the Wolverines were able to early on in this second half when New Mexico State stretched it out to an eight point lead. The Wolverines were able to respond with a couple quick baskets to cut the lead and 
I think this is another one of those times where New Mexico State will look to stretch out the game and the lead that they have. Let's see how the Wolverines respond and answer with a run of their own, hopefully. Baker with the steal, missed the layup. Put back though is good from DK Eldridge. Eight turnovers for each team. That one cost the Wolverines. Marcel Davis with it for UVU. Inside feed, Zach Russell turn around, jump good. The same play they ran just a few possessions earlier. That time another really good screen from Mitch inside. Zach just curls around the screen and has a wide open lane because New Mexico State has only that one big guy inside. Alex Carr sort of horse collared Baker as he tried to go around him. For Alex Carr, his first, team's fourth of this half for the Wolverines. And New Mexico State a lot more active with sending their big guys up and setting screens on the top guy of the zone. It's tough for the defender. That that case, Alex Carr tried to fight over the top of the screen. He wasn't able to do so. You see Napawe and you see Pascal Siakwa on the other side, kind of like a horns look, setting some screens up top. Bruniel pulls down yet another rebound, his ninth. Bruniel came in here as Black's eighth. Leading rebounder. In fact, we've got four of the top nine in the last on the floor tonight. Three of them for New Mexico State, though. Oh, they tried to go from half court all the way to Remy Berry. It'll belong to Utah Valley. It'll belong, it'll bring us to a media timeout as well. 11 16 left. The Wolverines are down right now by seven to New Mexico State. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at orleansarena.com. I don't think of myself as just an undergrad. Okay, so I'm a sophomore, but I'm at UVU where it's all about engaged learning. Leading a project on DNA research, I don't have to wait for grad school to get this kind of experience. As a UVU student, I guess you could say engaged learning is in my DNA. Back at the UCCU Center, we're on the campus of Utah Valley University, about a 45-minute drive south of Salt Lake City here in the beautiful state of Utah. UVU, the defending regular season Western Athletic Conference champions. Right now, trailing New Mexico State by seven. Still got 11-16 left. Yeah, I think what will be key for UVU, uh, you know, they're one for 11 from the three-point line. If they can just get you know, one or two of those three-point shots to fall, that will loosen up the defense a little bit. They've had the looks, specifically from the corner at times. A little trouble in the backcourt for UVU. Yep, shot. They didn't do it. Didn't get it over in their 10 seconds. Goes in the book as a turnover, number nine for UVU. Yeah, and that one hurts because you get the turnover from New Mexico State on the previous possession, and then you turn it right back over to them. Ball tipped out. 
It will belong to New Mexico State. Good active hands there from Alex. I thought I was going to get a souvenir. Almost. I think that you should change the rule. If you catch a basketball, it should be like a baseball game. If you Keep catch it. a basketball, yeah, take it home. I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> A lot of athletic farms won't like that idea. Those things are a little more expensive than baseball. See if UVU can break the press this time. They do. A little reach in foul that time. Going to go against Ian Baker. His second, team's second of the half. UVU's only hit one of their last five shots. Started the second half pretty hot, six straight points. Jaden Jackson looking inside. Brendan Evans turn around, shot blocked by Napawe. Guy can get up, Danny Baker. Well, that sort of looked like he was out of control, like he wanted to do one thing and was forced to do another, and he's called for the charge. Yeah. Give a, a lot of credit there to Jaden because that's so hard to do. You've got you've got to get back in transition. He did have some help with you, but Jaden did a great job of getting back, positioning himself. It's hard to get in front of player coming at you, but he knew anticipated right where that was going. Wolverines turn it over again. Their tenth. And I think Coach is really upset with that. Um, obviously, you have Brendan, the big guy, dribbling the ball in the middle of the court, and you've got guards coming from behind trying to swipe that ball away. But Coach wanted him to just hold that ball and get it into the hands of the guard. Trying to deny Napawe the entry pass. Brendan Evans being called for the foul, his third. Yeah, it's a tall task for the perimeter, or excuse me, for the inside guys. You're going to get Boston coming back into the game here, but. A tall task to get around to Poway because UVU's playing that zone defense. It's no hard. No pun intended. Yeah. It's hard to get around him inside because he's such a big, wide body. They list him at 268 pounds. They say he now weighs a lot more than that due to his work in the weight room. Foul inside against Utah Valley. Boston Gubler. Gubler picks up his third, so he came in to replace Brendan Evans, who picked up his third, immediately Boston called for three, his third. And I think we go back to what I said just a few minutes ago, New Mexico State getting a lot of opportunities and second chances right inside. Uh, whether it be off dribble drives from their guards or inside, just second chance points right at the rim. It's hard to do, it's hard to block out when you're playing the zone, Jim, because you have an area and you've got to find a man. And Wolverine's got to do a better job of finding a man and blocking out a, a man, not necessarily just a body. Excuse me, a space or an area. Wolverines desperately need a basket. Not a turnover. Daniel Mullins, lightning fast. Jumper the other way. Eldridge buries it. It's a 10 to 2 run right now. Well, and the thing that's killing UVU are those turnovers again. And we've seen it a couple times. Brendan Evans had the turnover. That time, a turnover inside. It was, saw Brendan get blocked a few minutes ago. That time, the ball gets poked away from a guard coming from behind. Zach just about turned that ball over, too. They always have to be aware. Coach Sensaker used to always use the term backflow. And backflow means when you're dribbling the ball up, you're going to have guards, you're going to have people coming from behind trying to tap that ball, swipe that ball away. We've seen that happen multiple times, regardless second. who's bringing the ball up. That foul against Mullings is second. Nine minutes left. Wolverines are down by 11. This match is the biggest lead for New Mexico State. Jaden Jackson. 0 for 4 for Jaden tonight. Here comes that screen from Siakam on Mullings. Nice job of getting over it and around it for Marcel. Napawe fighting for it. 
Marcel Davis comes up limping badly. Either a left ankle, left knee, I'm not sure. Going to be a turnover instead of a basket. It remains 42 31. Yeah, I'm with you, Jim. He doesn't look 100%. He's kind of limping, favoring one leg. He, he looked to the bench, but I'm not sure they noticed. Marcel Davis, a transfer from Utah State. One of two Wolverines out there right now who came from the Aggies of Utah State. The other being Mitch Bruneal. Whistle's going to go against Brendan Evans. His fourth. Wolverines struggling right now to get anything going offensively. Evans to the bench, Goobler in. Goobler's out there with three. And this is big for New Mexico State. They're at the free throw line on every foul here until the end of the game. Siakam with 12 points overall, make it 13. The run is now 11 to 2. Pascal Siakam, 6'9", redshirt freshman, Cameroon, buries them both. New Mexico State with their biggest lead of the game. Zach Nelson open for a second for three. Instead goes to Boston Goober. He's fouled on the way up by Siakam. For Siakam, that'll be foul number two. Oh, no, they're going to call that one on Baker. Wait, now they change it again. It's Siakam, his second. Timeout, 747 left. Wolverines down by 13. You are watching UVU TV. I hate math. I can't count how many times I've heard people say that. And as a math teacher, I take it personally. So, while working on my master's at UVU, I developed ways to help kids not hate math. Does engaged learning make a difference? You do the math. Wolverines of Utah Valley, 38% shooting here in the second half. You know, they shot 31% in the first half, Matt, yep. against New Mexico State's 41%. New Mexico State's improving here in the second half. They're shooting 44% in the second half. UVU's improving, but the gap's just getting bigger. Yeah, the, the early opportunities that we talked about UVU scoring on have, have kind of dried up, and, you know, UVU's turned the ball over. And, Right when we talked about the need for UVU to make a run to answer what New Mexico State has did, they had a key turnover. I think it was Marcel that passed it, turned the ball over, went the other way. You know, I'll look at the uh, I'll look at the turnovers. UVU with 11 turnovers, and New Mexico State's turned that into 21 points. I think it doesn't help, obviously, the the shooting percentage, and Wolverines have just gone cold from the three, one of 11. And 
You know, another another interesting statistic, Jim, is all of I think the Wolverines now five free throw attempts for the game have all come from Boston. Well, he's the only one who's even bent to the stripe. That's amazing. Or he's five out of six. Meanwhile, 10 of 12 shooting for New Mexico State from the free throw line, and they've sent three different players to the strike. 12 point lead. New Mexico State. Foul on the shot. Jaden Jackson of UVU. His first. Team's eighth. Barry there at the free throw line. Seven points tonight. You know, him, seven and a half minutes left here. Critical on a miss here. Wolverines come up with uh, with a rebound. If, if they're going to make a run, if they have it, have it left in them tonight, it's going to have to start on this next possession. 45 33. 33, really? 34. Well, I've got 32. The computer says 32. Scoreboard showing 34. Now they change it to 32. Thank you. Wolverines have 32 points. And another miss. Yeah, really good look there. Haven't been able to get the ball to fall. Just five of 14 shooting here in the second half. Mullins. Yeah, wow, well, they're just starting to flex a muscle now. Yeah, Coach Jones, think we're getting a timeout here, but I think in the second half here, Siakam has really come to play. Um, you know, he leads the team right now with 14 points, but I think a, a major catalyst for New Mexico State has been Daniel Mullins. He only has seven points, but you know, plays like that. See what type of player he is, and he's been able to break down the defense on a couple of the uh, couple of the, the possessions that they've had. He's he's aided their uh, their efforts here in the second half. Well, you know, both the game plans for both these teams have worked as far as shutting down the guy yeah. that, that did the damage in the first game. Napawe had 14 points in the first game between these two. Tonight, Napawe a very quiet four points mm -hmm. in the first game UVU's Dante Williams had a game high 17 points tonight Dante Williams scoreless yeah he uh, he struggled tonight and I think you're exactly right the game plan being hey let's let's try and take away their best player Zach has had a great game for UVU tonight but uh, yeah Dante struggled a little bit and you have Mitch Bernil has struggled in his own right too Well, Marvin Menzies and Dick Hunsaker both uh, two very well respected and knowledgeable head coaches. They've been, it's not their first rodeo, shall we say. Ten second shot clock. Dante for three. In and out. Mullings with the rebound for New Mexico State. Use missed their last six shots. Dante had a hand on that one. Mexico State in the Poway. He lost it. Turnover. Marcel Davis pushing it up court to Dante Williams. Baseline drive over to Googler. Bernil tracks down the loose ball. Dante for three. It'll remain Wolverine basketball. 5.36 left. Wolverines down by 15. Biggest deficit for the Wolverines. New Mexico State wants to take a quick 30 second timeout. Matt, it's not over with 536, nope. but the Wolverines really can't afford a, a whole lot of misses from here on out. No, they can't, and they've got to get defensive stops, so you have to have pretty much the perfect five and a half minutes left. But 
know, they're still competing. They're still fighting. They, they've done a good job of running their plays on offense. They've, they've set some plays to get some shooters open. Mitch had an opportunity in the corner. Dante's had a couple of threes. They had a good opportunity on a couple baseline jump shots, one a three, one a two-pointer from Jaden Jackson on the wing. It's just that lid on the uh, lid on the rim. Get a replay here of ball going in favor of UVU. That one tipped out by New Mexico State. Nice camera work from our student staff here. This game being produced, directed, and completely worked by students from UVU's digital media department. Part of the engaged learning program that they have here at Utah Valley University. You come here, you get to do stuff. You don't just sit around and learn about it. Zach Nelson over to Darius Hamilton. New Mexico State's ball. Coming up on five minutes left here in Orem. Ten seconds on the shot clock for the Aggies to work with. Dante going for another steal, missed that one. Jumper for three, no. Zach Nelson pulled down his fifth rebound. Brunel open for three. UVU is one of 15 from three point land this game. They've missed all seven of theirs in the second half. New Mexico State's only taken seven. They've made two of theirs for the game. Just when I thought that the defense that New Mexico State was playing was going to you know, discourage a lot of threes from UVU, surprised to see that UVU's doubled the three point attempts that New Mexico State has. I don't think New Mexico State wants to shoot some threes. They're trying to get that ball inside, but. Marcel Davis picks up his first foul. Tanvir Bular, seven foot three center, checks in for New Mexico State. Marcel Davis. I thought Marcel was going out, but he stays back. He stays out there after all. Yeah, Alex Mitch, Carr in. Mitch comes out. Mullings has eight points. Half of them are from the free throw line. Just heard uh, Coach Weir. Did you hear what he said right in front of us? He's I did not. Telling his seven foot three center, Tanvir Bular, that he's going to have to help on some threes. That's going to be a lot of ground for him to cover. He said he's going to have to help in the corner threes. That's why UV's got some open looks, because you know, with this defense, they do require their big guy inside to get out of the three line. Dante finally on the board, his first two points of the night. New Mexico State just going to burn some clock now. 3.45 to play. Out in front by 15 points. Daniel Mullings crashes into Darius Hamilton. Call for the offensive foul. Yeah, great awareness there from Darius. Terrific job of rotating, getting into position, and taking the charge. Media timeout. We'll take it with him. Three and a half to play here in Orem. Wolverines are down by 15 on UBU TV.
34 points for the Wolverines tonight. At halftime, it was 25 to 19, New Mexico State by six points. It's uh, it's been a combination of Wolverines having a poor shooting night and, and really good defense from New Mexico yeah. State. Well, we we mentioned at halftime it was kind of a defensive half to start. Um, I think New Mexico State's defense has been a little better in the second half, but UVU's had had great looks. I thought, you know, UVU's defense has been terrific tonight. I, I really do think that. I think they've been just terrific in tonight's game. They just couldn't get their their shots to fall. But you know, New Mexico State, you you have to you have to point the the finger at their defense and say that's what's caused troubles for UVU. Just two of their last 15 shots have gone down. The Wings don't have a lot of time to burn clock either. Well, the shot clock's winding down. If nothing else. Zach Nelson for an NBA three barely drew front iron. Not the shot I'm guessing they wanted. I don't know if we've seen a game this year for UVU where they've had so many possessions end in, you know, long or desperation type shot because the shot clock was running down. And again goes to the defense and, and how they New Mexico State, the Aggies defense, how they set it up. Well, we told you in the pregame show, New Mexico State number one in the whack and scoring defense, only allowing 61 points a game. When you see why it's, it's size, it's length, it's athleticism and it's hard to get uh, not sure if they play this defense every single game. I'm sure they don't do it all the time, but. Well, UVU right now on track for their second lowest scoring game of the season. Darius Hamilton can't get the jumper down rebound to Barry. UVU had scored only 33 points in a loss on the road against Seattle February 7th. Other than that, 44 point, or excuse me, 43 against UC Davis. So New Mexico State doing a number on UVU defensively tonight. Well, and to put it into perspective, I and mean, you talked about it at the very beginning, as we see Siakam with the drive and kick, but ball back to New Mexico State. So they average 70 points on the year. Yep. Do, do the Aggies, and so it goes back to what I said, pointing at UVU. Their defense has been spectacular, holding them. 20 points at this point below their season average. It's just they've held, you know, opponents 61 points per game, Wolverines at 34. Barry's jumper won't go. Rebound came out to him. The entire coaching staff of New Mexico State jumped up and said, burn the some clock. Instead, Mullings. Technical foul here. Yeah, Daniel Mullings. Defending WAC Player of the Year called for the technical hanging on the rim. I think what they're going to get, Jim, watch the, uh, I don't think they got him for hanging on the rim. Watch him slap the backboard, both hands, right there. Really? Yep. That's a technical. Why? You can't slap the backboard. You know. Because he wasn't on the rim long enough to be hanging on the rim. I, I mean, if he would have just fallen, they wouldn't have called anything, but. You know, when you're only 5'10", those things don't matter to me. Yeah, I know. I never no. <laughs> stop. It's not my area either. I never slapped the backboard in my life. I, I could be wrong, but I, there, he didn't hang on the rim long enough. I think they for sure got him with the slap. Good call, partner. And I'm sure a lot of people watching went, probably agreed with you to say, hey, he didn't hang on the rim at all. Dante hits both free throws. 15 point lead for New Mexico State with a minute 16 to play. With a win, they clinched the number one seed in the conference tournament. And if Grand Canyon continues to lose tonight, we'll tell you about that in our postgame show what that means. Jaden Jackson to 
Darius Hamilton and a foul inside to stop the clock with 104 left. Foul on Siakam. Tish off there, left handed pass from Jaden. Siakam acting like he didn't foul him, but he clearly hit Darius. Darius Hamilton's on the scoreboard with his first point of the night. Darius Hamilton, a wounded warrior this year. New Mexico State fans can relate to that. Hamilton had all sorts of injuries, hasn't seen a whole lot of minutes this year. 51-38 with a minute left. New Mexico State out on top. Mexico State is about to clinch the number one seed in the conference tournament. Eli Robinson off the glass. Nope, New Mexico State can run this one out. UVU's second lowest scoring game of the year. Just 38 points tonight, and they lose it. To New Mexico State 51 38 New Mexico State improves to 18 and 10 Wolverines fall to 9 and 16 in the whack and that's the important part Wolverines are 3 and 7 and New Mexico State 10 and 1 a quick look in on the scoreboard shows that Grand Canyon is currently down by two with two minutes to play if Grand Canyon loses that game then New Mexico State is the regular season champions are the regular season champions. All right, Matt, uh, your uh, your analysis of this one, well, my friend. I think the Wolverines fought. They were competitive. You know, shots didn't fall when they needed them to fall. And I think, you know, the the size of uh, New Mexico State just wore on the Wolverines as that game progressed. But you know, there were a lot of positives, things to take away and, and learn from. I think the biggest thing is. You know, just their offense, the, the, sh the shots and chances that they had were there, just unable to convert. But, you know, again, you hold New Mexico State 20 points under their season average. Uh, I, I thought their defense has uh, was fantastic. And Me New Mexico State, just, just a better team, Jim. I think better team tonight, and, you know, they won it on their home court. So I have to say that uh, they're the better team. 51-38 final score, yeah. Uh, I'll say they're the better team. They are the class of the WAC yeah. this year. By the way, Grand Canyon just tied up their game with Pan American with a minute 50 to play, 57-57 to score there. So they're not going to finish by the time we finish here. But uh, it's quite possible that uh, New Mexico State will be the Western Athletic Conference regular season yeah. champs uh, in just a few minutes. Or uh, worse comes to worse, Grand Canyon goes on to win, and New Mexico State plays Grand Canyon Saturday. And if New Mexico State wins that one, then they're the champions. Yep. But uh, they, they look like the powerhouse tonight. Yep. So the Wolverines really just looking forward to the tournament at this point. I think so. I mean, you've got a couple games to finish it yep. off, you know, a couple home games, as you talked about. And you, know, you look forward to the tournament. You know, it, it all starts new. You know, the Wolverines should know that of anybody where they won the regular season last year and got knocked out in the second round. So, you know, anything can anything can happen in the uh, in the tournament. And. You know, you, you want to finish strong the regular season. Your eyes are towards that, and you know, you got to learn. It, it, one thing Coach Senseko will always be teaching and always be professing is, you know, the season. It's a long season. You've always got to try and improve, and uh, we, we need to see some, a little bit more improvement going into the tournament in, in the next couple weeks here. 
Well, that's going to do it from here. Thanks for being with us. Wolverines lose this one 58-38. Our next broadcast here on UVU TV comes your way Saturday night, 48 hours from now. Wolverines will be hosting Texas Pan American. This telecast produced by students from the UVU Digital Media Department. It's been a copyrighted production of Utah Valley University and the Wolverine Sports Network. For Matt Peterson, I'm Jim McCullough saying so long from Orem, Utah. You are watching UVU TV. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at orleansarena.com. This copyrighted telecast of the Western Athletic Conference may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the WAC Digital Network.
This copyrighted telecast of the Western Athletic Conference may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the WAC Digital Network.